Hi, my name is Isis Sepulveda and I am an architecture student at El Paso Community College. I'm currently in my second semester and I'm here to teach you guys about section perspective views and how to draw them. In order to understand what a section perspective view drawing is, we have to understand what a linear perspective drawing is and what a section cut drawing is. All of my definitions are going to be found in the Architectural Graphics uh, textbook, the sixth edition by Francis D. K. Ching. So their definition of a linear perspective drawing is uh, a drawing that describes three-dimensional volumes and spatial relationships on a 2D surface through the use of lines that converge as they recede into the depth of a drawing. So essentially, it's a drawing that depicts depth and detail. Um, their definition of a section view is an orthographic projection as it would appear if it were to be cut by an intersecting plane. So if you were to take a building and cut it in half and only see one half, what would it look like? Both of these types of drawings are used by architects to get a better idea of what a building would be like or a spatial environment would be like. So when you combine the two, the scaled attributes of a section drawing and the pictorial depth of a perspective, you get a better understanding of what a part of a building would look like. So a lot of architects like to use uh, section perspectives because they illustrate the constructional aspects of a design as well as the spaces that are formed by the structure. So now we need to set up our drawing. The first thing you're going to need is your picture plane, or in this case, a piece of paper, and your building section cut. Mine is a quick sketch from the architectural graphics textbook, and you're going to need a pencil and a ruler as well. So next we're going to establish what our horizon line is. You do not have to mark yours out in marker, I just kind of uh, alluded where it was for the sake of the video. The height of your horizon line is going to determine what is seen because it is going to be the height of the eye level of the viewer. Another factor that's going to determine what is going to be seen by the viewer is your center vision, which is what I'm establishing now. Your center vision can be put wherever you feel um, is necessary. Like I said, it's going to determine what is seen in the perspective section view. Next, you need to develop where your um, diagonal point is for your 45 degree lines. So it can be on either the right or the left. You really only need one uh, when drawing one point perspective drawings. So when drawing a diagonal point, you need to make the distance between the center of vision and the diagonal point either the same distance as the width of your section view or the height. My section view is five inches, so I made the distance between my center of vision and my diagonal point five inches as well. Now it's time to create our sight lines and our interior walls using our center point and our diagonal point. Using my diagonal point, I, I made a line essentially from the diagonal point down to the ground level to create the depth of my drawing. First, I started off with the right corner of the building section and connected it to the center point and then I intersected it with the diagonal point and that's how I got my depth. That's how you would realistically get your depth. This method is what essentially gives the visual illusion of a three-dimensional space. And now we're going to make stairs. So as a tip for stairs, you're going to want to make like a wedge shape, obviously. But if you line up your ruler against the back wall of your staircase, you can actually create evenly spaced or as evenly spaced as possible um, stairs using the ticks of your ruler. You just mark out the spots and very carefully use your center point. You can finish up the rest of the details of your drawing. If you're just practicing, you can try adding columns, windows, you name it. But your final step will be adding uh, emphasis to the form and adding hatching or crochet to further that emphasis between the interior and the exterior spaces. So I'm adding um, hatching as my crochet. So crochet is essentially just uh, this technique where we uh, add some sort of darkness to show the difference between interior and exterior spaces. Hatching can be done uh, 
either freehanded or with a guide. I used a guide, you can do whatever you feel comfortable. And this is the final product. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Here are some credits, I will be linking additional videos that help me out in the bio, and I'll see you guys later.